the story headlines that says Fidel Napier. I mean, I think they know that so they have people in a Jamaica named Napier, but uh, Jamaica is uh, out of many. That means enough people come to come um, be sperm donors and all them kind of something. There. So, you know how we history go. Enough black people with French name and uh, European name and all them kind of something. There. And Japanese name and them thing, the Chinese name and whatever else. Anyways, Fidel Napier came out our Fidel Napier made it out of Camden, often called America's poorest and most dangerous city, only to end up in a country where the water sometimes cut out and he fears for his safety when he leaves the house. Hear how Fiend's story end up, people. Car dip then dip him in. Let me get straight to the point before all this long reading. Them deport the man. This is why they deported him. Almost six months have passed now since federal authorities took Napier out of his Pensacan home that is in New Jersey that he shared with his wife and his three children on a city picture or a nice family, then left him in Jamaica, the country where he was born. Napier came to Camden at five years old, but he never became a U.S. citizen. Again, like I said, becoming a U.S. citizen would not have helped him. He was deported on July 30th because of a 19, I mean I talk about July 30th of 2015, you know, because of a 1998 drug conviction that labeled him high priority candidate. I say it again. The man come to America when he was five years old, you know, and he was deported July. I remember he wasn't here illegally. He just never became a citizen so he always had permanent residency but he never became a citizen all right Napier came to Camden at five years old never became a US citizen though he was deported on July 30th of 2015 because of a drug conviction that labeled him high priority candidate from 1998 so he was a young teenager then all right struggling in a rough inner city trying to get some extra money got caught up in some bad company that the, the crazy thing about the story is that was his only offense got arrested and the thing changed him life right now I'm going to read the story, so the bear with me with the long reading, I will try to be quick. Because I know some people come from my channel and talk about, you chat too fucking much, get to the damn point. Them people, let me erase them and some of them, let me just keep them there so you can see. But anyways, here goes the story. He was deported on July 30th because of a 1998 drug conviction that labeled him high priority candidate. Napier once spent his time coaching youth football and basketball and going out to dinner with his wife or youth basketball and going out to dinner with his wife now lives with a distant cousin in St. Thomas. So oh, Jamaica people nice then take you back in all when time you're gone and you know send back nothing for them for how many years and you forget about them and then dip you or somebody you have to go stay. Hmm. So I'm done a St. Thomas I stay with a distant cousin in a rural community community outside of Kingston that is what? Well, outside of Kingston. So St. Thomas is right outside of Kingston. Oh, the book. Anyway, that this year was ranked as Jamaica's most impoverished parish. Minano. It is a foreign place to Napier. He does not have a Jamaican accent, which he said makes him stick out. And he can see people sizing him up when he's in public. When friends send him money, he gives most of it to his cousin to help with the bills. He's trying to obtain the identification documents he needs to apply for jobs. But <laughs> but no sister then deported at last or us when then come home uh, trying to obtain documents to uh, apply for our job. And anyway. So my cousin just graduated from um, university, from UWE, 
with them bachelor's degree at 24 years old and they, they uh, and can hardly find employment so um anyway boy the man said him see people are size him up when him step out and him feel freed <laughs> that's why you should have took your ass back home or more and more anyway i feel bad for him still because him family really i got through it you know and the truth is that an offense that he committed in 1998 he should not be deported in 2015 damn near 20 years is it after the man done established himself uh, have a family and everything like that and never got in trouble again since then don't know how he ended up in this situation as the story goes it is a foreign foreign place for him I wake up this morning I wake I wake up every morning and I think what am I doing here Napier is now 38 years old I'm used to taking care of my family being a father to my children I just don't feel like a man he said this life isn't me it's just not who I always tried to be in his absence his once content suburban family home is roiled with sadness anger and stress said his wife Kiona Napier their 16 year old daughter Tayona complains of stomach ache and often asks to stay home from school Talia their 13 year old cannot bear to have FaceTime uh, phone calls with their father she just bursts out into tears just the sight of his smile their son Fidel Jr. 7 has gone from cherry to standoffish slamming doors and yelling I'm having a tough time with them says the wife as she told the Philadelphia Inquirer the kids are shutting down they're struggling and I'm struggling money is tight she said she took a medical leave from her job as a lab technician due to anxiety and depression that set in after the deportation responsibilities that were always shared such as shuttling the kids between sports practices and school events so on now rest solely on her friends have pooled money together for a ticket so that she could visit her husband once after he left but the kids have not seen him since the summer hoping for a chance to spend the holiday together napier set up a donation website got gofundme.com slash napier family all right gofundme.com slash side slash napier and a p i e r family with proceeds going towards a plane fare to jamaica so far the effort has drawn less than 250 dollars can pay for one plane ticket Napier's deportation was the accumulation of a process that began in 2010 when Homeland Security agents arrested him at the manufacturing company where he worked. After he was taken into custody in May, he spent weeks in federal detention before agents put him on a plane. <laughs> Policies enacted under the Obama administration focus on removing felons and repeat offenders from the country he wasn't a repeat offender though but he had been a felon in 98 it is unclear when Napier came to the department's attention or why he was not targeted until more than a decade after his plea the case against him stems entirely from crimes committed almost two decades ago poor thing people I say it again anytime when you know, look more about the case when do in a 98 Napier childhood in Camden was unstable they went on to say he said he returned to he turned to drug dealing and learned that Kiona when he learned that Kiona his high school sweetheart back then which is his wife now was pregnant at 20 he pleaded guilty to selling cocaine he now believes that getting arrested saved his life after his conviction he vowed never to abandon his family he completed a drug program served no prison time and went on to build a career 
In December, he and Keona will mark 21 years as a couple. You see, so the guy made great strides. He's been a good father, a role model in his community and everything. I all, it's like trying the person twice for the same thing. You know, then give them give community service and all that other stuff before and probation and whatever else. And I tell myself, what, 20 years later, them come and take him and deport him. That's like a whole new court case based on, I don't know, boy. Napier said he was unaware that the 1998 plea could jeopardize his status in the country and that his lawyer at the time did not know he was not a U.S. citizen. He appealed the deportation decision without success, arguing that, here the part here, one filing arguing that because his stepfather helped police and federal agents arrest Jamaican-born gang members in Camden, he returned to the country, people could kill him. So his stepfather also was I do some undercover work in New Jersey, um, rounding up Jamaicans that were there involved in gang activity and making sure that they got deported. He told the people them that on the grounds of that, his life could be in danger if he went back to Jamaica. Them said, well, they don't really care. I never watched the show, the first 48, when them tell the people them about, you can tell us. You have the people and face on TV and they have to go back to the same neighborhood that that crime, that, that murder just happened in. Somebody in the neighborhood know them and, they, and we all watch the next 48 or the first 48, the show, the show is called. So these people do this to encourage uh, another murder because they know how the street code goes and snitching and everything and that kind of life and then they let you back out into the same community and it's no surprise that our next one end up dead anyways i feel bad for this guy um go on holy head bridging you know one not in jamaica and i know for a fact that life in jamaica can be very tough especially if you're out of place there I am fortunate if me get dipped today, I would be very okay. And the reason why I would be very okay is because there are systems and things put in place for me to be very okay in my land of my birth. Plus, no people not even know say over 30 years me they are fine, you know. In other words, I've been in America for over 30 years. I didn't lose my Jamaican accent. The only thing that happened was I picked up an American accent and I could switch it up. So when I start talking like I'm an American, I might sound like one. But if I jump here come with that, you know, I'm going to be hard for you to tell, say, mm -hmm. I want to weed that. I also didn't come from. So to those who came here and forget which part them come from to the point where them all lose their accent and not even remember how to sound like that i mean you strip for yourself till you can you can't identify with your people and them can't identify with you anymore then things like this happen and them throw you back in at the lions then and suddenly you're a stranger i don't know and you feel out of place. The man same feel every time he step out, him can see people sizing him up. I'm sure that nobody now size him up. <laughs> I'm sure that nobody now size him up. Then probably I look on him like, um, can you know Jamaica? Any and every community is close. Like if new faces come in a community, people are gonna look, pay you, and then worse you gonna start talking and them hear the American accent. Hey man, how you doing? What's good, son? And them all said, hmm, a foreigner. All right, I wonder how long him there for stay. When them wait and them say months and months pass and you lock up in a house, and them all said, them start for say, hmm, maybe I just saw him born, but a deportee, they start ask questions and them things. So the people them probably curious, but in a, his paranoid mind now, this a man must think so they must size him up for hurt him. Anyway, people, I'm going to take a look at the story. All right.
a SoFlo TV man, I had to sh shed some light on this one on behalf of the family um, because I know the kids must be really going through it. I know the kids must be really going through it and that's nothing nice for children to go through. That's nothing nice for children to go through at all. The man's name is Fidel Napier. Alright? Fidel Napier. And they have a GoFundMe account. So if you want to pick me them for go see them daddy. I don't know. It's so flow TV man, I'm out of here. I just thought I'd do that one. Um for enlighten some of Jamaican people them. So no matter how long you're there foreign dog, no matter if you have blue passport book no, you are citizen or everything, them can strip you off that and send you back. Alright? So or to the wise, make a dollar, you make two dollar, put one a foreign, one a yard. Alright, I'm out.